In this video, we'll talk about eliminating the parameter from parametric equations, which is really one of the main ways to visualize what a curve looks like if it's written in parametric form. So sometimes these parametric equations can be hard to visualize because we don't really know what the graphs are gonna look like or what the value of t corresponds to or how things actually work out for this curve. So the easiest way to usually interpret what a graph will look like, especially if it's given parametrically, is by limiting the parameter. And the idea here is I wanna get rid of the t and just get down to y is a function of x, like we know from before, and we know what those functions look like. These could also be x as a function of y or other combinations of x and y, but we're trying to get rid of this t because the t is sort of making things confusing when you're trying to visualize what's going on. Again, the main point being we generally know what these will look like if it's just x and y. In t, it can be confusing, but in x and y, we should know what's going on. So the first example, we're going to look at that same curve from before we got, that we got parabola with last time. So figure out the relationship between x and y for the parametric equation given here, x equals 4 minus t and y equals t squared plus 2t. So our main trick here is going to be to isolate t in one equation and then plug that into the other. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve out for t in the x equation. So this equation gives me then that t is equal to 4 minus x. And then what I can do is take that and plug it into this equation to now get y as a function of x. So what I'll get from that is that y equals four minus x squared plus two times four minus x. Now I can expand this out and see what I get. And we do in fact get a quadratic, which we can now factor y equals x minus six, x minus four. So it's a parabola facing upward with the zeros at six and four which is exactly what we saw when we sketched this out parametrically was this exact shape here. So that's one case of this problem where you can solve out for t and then see what's going on. Another case is by using other relations you know about different functions to try to figure out what's going on with this equation. We have a new equation here, which is x is two plus three cosine theta and y equals one plus three sine theta. Now I don't really want to solve out for theta here because that's going to involve either an inverse cosine or an inverse sine and I don't want to deal with that. So what we're going to do instead is use a different relation that we know to try to approach this problem. So what I know, what I'm going to use is the fact that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. I want to use this fact to allow me to combine x and y into a single expression. I'm not going to get y as a function of x here, it's not going to happen, but I can get a single expression that puts these two together and see where that gets me. So the x equation here, x is two plus three cosine theta, tells me that I can write cosine theta as x minus two over three. Similarly, the y equation, one plus three sine of theta, tells me that I can write sine of theta as y minus one over three. I'm gonna take these two facts and plug them in here, which gives me that I can write my expression as x minus two over three squared plus y minus one over three squared equals one, or multiplying both sides by nine, x minus two squared plus y minus one squared equals nine. And what kind of a function is this? What kind of a graph is this? This is a circle with radius three and center at two, one. It may not have been easy to see that right away from the parametric equations, but once you combine them together, you can then get this standard form that we know for a circle to know that this is gonna trace out a circle when we draw it out. So that's the idea of eliminating the parameter. The idea being sometimes it's easier to visualize an equation if I have it just in terms of x and y and not in terms of the extra parameter t or theta. You can just do that by either solving out for t in one of the equations and plugging in the other to simplify it out, or by using some other known relation you have between these different functions to put them together. Your goal is just get some expression that relates x and y to each other without involving this t, and that'll make it easier to see what's going on for these parametric equations.